Welcome. I just wanted to check in with you regarding um, the Intro to Fiction lecture and drinking coffee elsewhere. So in the lecture I go over some basic elements of fiction including plot framework and point of view. So I wanted to give you this lecture just to illustrate it in a secondary way that might be helpful. Um, so I'm using the movie Matrix as an example. Um, so plot Oftentimes it's set up where a situation at the beginning of the plot structure is set into motion. Again, this is for traditional set plot movies. We're not talking about alternative movies or movies that kind of mess with plot on purpose. But for Matrix, that's what it's set. He finds out, Neo finds out that um, he gets a contact and a situation is set. It becomes There's obviously a complication that occurs. We get it up until he um, meets this character where he has to make a choice between the blue pill and the red pill, kind of an iconic moment. Um, and it continues to work up to complications until you hit a climax. In this situation, it's a fight scene. Um, and then once the climax hits, there tends to be a falling action. And that happens when he goes to see the, um, the kind of visionary um, future teller who makes him wonder if he really is the chosen one. And then towards the end, there is typically a resolution where things work out and we kind of have an ending. Or there can be a denouement, which means it's a French word that means an unloosening or untying, which is very indicative of movies like Matrix, where there's going to be sequels, or Lord of the Rings, or The Hobbit, these kinds of films. So the, one of the first examples I give was Widow of Ephesus, which this is an illustration of. Hopefully you've read over that and it makes sense to you. Basically, when there's a framework that sets up a story where there's a reversal in the, your view of someone, the widow, she seems to be long-suffering and faithful, but very quickly offers up her husband's body to save her new lover. The second one is a mechanical reversal, which is the gift of the Magi. And again, the husband and the wife both give each other gifts that entail them um, not being useful at all, which is kind of a statement on the poor not worry, should not worry about the gift. The, their hearts should be enough. Um, he gives her hair combs and she has cut her hair in order to give him a chain for his watch. Of course, he has sold his watch to get the hair combs. Um, another area is framework um, regarding the journey. So many times, and I went over this in more detail on the slides, I mean on the um, lecture, that the journey can be a journey in return, a journey interrupted, a journey to a destination, or just the journey itself. Um, which can illustrate a story very well. Uh, here's an example. Black Panther is a great example of a journey in return, a more modern example. You may also have Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, Finding Nemo in this section. A journey to a destination, Little Miss Sunshine. Get out. That's questionable. That The journey is supposed to be to get to the in-law's place, but obviously things go awry once they arrive. Um, I did not put this in the online lecture, but I thought it was a helpful um, graphic regarding how basically all Hero Journeys movies are the same. <laughs> so you can kind of see the alignment regarding the hero, um, the mystic, the enemy, the shapeshifter, trickster, and the guardian. So you also want to be aware of point of view. Is it written in first person, second person, third person limited, or third person omniscient? I've given more detailed examples of this. It's important because our experience of the narrator's story that's happening to him or her changes based on this. So the first story you're going to read is going to be um, it's going to be written in third person limited. And so we get to know a lot about Tia. But the second story is in first person, um, and we get to know a lot about Spurgeon. And you will see the differences in your understanding of the characters based off this distinction. 
So the short story collection we're starting with is Drinking Coffee Elsewhere by ZZ Packer. She was a professor at San Francisco State for quite some time and she's now working on some novels and has taken some time away from teaching. But this um, collection of short stories won um, many awards and is a national bestseller. It's a collection of eight short stories and while most of the protagonists are African American, not all of the stories and most of the stories are not necessarily centered around race, though it does factor into some aspects of all of the stories. The story we're going to start with, Speaking in Tongues, takes place in a rural church in the South, in Alabama in particular, and it starts there and then the protagonist journeys to Atlanta, Georgia, which is more of a city, a big city, a metropolitan, metropolitan area that she has to navigate. The beginning is important. It talks about a church. If you're not familiar with some of these churches, it might physically look like this one. She talks about, in the very opening section, a hymnal closet, which is a place where they would keep hymn books, which are books of songs that the um, congregation re sings together. And so that takes place in a small closet behind this area that you see in this picture. Um, when they talk about speaking in tongues, this is an event that particularly Pentecostal evangelicals participate in at some level, sometimes within a service, sometimes without, where they get a message from, quote unquote, the Holy Spirit to speak an alternate language that someone else interprets as a message for the congregation. It's supposed to be a sign of spirituality and commitment to Christ. So it is, again, I've mentioned the setting already, the characters are Tia, she is the protagonist, Marcel, her good friend, Aunt Roberta, who is raising Tia, Marie and Desi, who she meets in Atlanta. The themes overall in this story are religious oppression, sexual discovery, and a loss of innocence. Um, a quick overview of the plot is Tia gets in trouble at church. She runs away to find her mom in Atlanta. She finds other characters who teach her something about herself. Um, so I'm really asking that you get into reading, speaking in tongues, and start working on the discussion questions. They are not due until you have read both stories, speaking in tongues and Ant of the Self. If you would like to work ahead and see where we're going with this assignment, you may look at the prompt, um, which has all the options for the essay you are going to write from the stories that are available in the text. If you have other questions, please let me know.